Now that we've looked at for loops and how they work with arrays, what I want to show you is how default values work with arrays. The first thing that I've done here is I've set up an array of integers. And then I print out their default values, so I don't put anything inside of the array, I just print what's already there. So you can see right here, I'm printing out each value, and then I put a space after it. I go to the next line, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the array with values between 100 and 500. After I'm done filling the array, I'm going to print the array again with those filled values. So I compile it then run it and as you can see the first time that it prints which is going to be right here it prints zeros because that is the default value for integers after it's filled right here it's going to print the new values that are put in there the next program that we're going to look at instead of doing integers we're going to look at doubles so I print out the default values I then fill the values with random decimals and then finally I print out those values just like I did in the last book. I'm going to compile the program and run it and we see the default value for double is 0, 0.0 but after I put in random values you can see this is what the array would look like. The next default value I'd like to look at is boolean. So I've created a boolean array called correct. Again, I'm going to print out its default value, and then you can see that I'm iterating every second time. So every second value I'm going to put in is true, and then I'm going to print out the correct array again. So let's compile, run, and you can see that the default value is false, and then if I go in and I change every other value to true, print it out again, you can see what happens. I get true, false, true, false, true, false. The next data type that I'm going to talk about is a string. And so I've created a string. I've only created five values inside of that string. I print out what's inside of there as a default value. Then I go to each index and I add a new name, Aaron, James, David, Daniel, and John. And then I go to print that same array with the changed values. Let's go ahead and see what happens. The default value inside of a string array or any object array would be null. And null, again, means nothing. And then you can see down here after it changes that it puts in the names that I put in right here and prints it out. The last data type that we're going to be talking about are character arrays. Now character arrays are kind of interesting. First, I'm going to print out the default values. This is going to give you something interesting. Then what I do is I put in a random letter from A to Z. And then I go down and I print this. But I'm not printing like I normally would. What I'm printing is I'm printing letters. So I have two arrays here. Letters is going to be an array of my random letters. And then my second one after here, where I usually have printed a space, I print the original array in between each letter. Let's see what result comes from that. So. It's kind of interesting because if you look at default values, there's really nothing to look at because the default value for a character is a space. But if you look down here, what I've done is I print a random letter, but after it, I print what's in that original array, what's in that default array. And you can see that there's nothing inside of each one. Or actually, there is something, and it's a space inside of each one. Hopefully you can see from this video that every array that is created has some kind of default value, whether it be string, char, boolean, int, or double. Some value is put into an array when it is constructed, and you can verify this by printing out the information.